So you want to be a blacksmith when you grow up? Making simple projects is a great way to learn basic skills. Things like hooks, nails, and making leaves can really be good skill builders. And if you make enough of them, you can really start refining those skills. But you know what? At some point, you need to challenge yourself a little more. When this stuff becomes ordinary, when it becomes the routine things that you're doing, and there's no new skill to be learned from it, you probably aren't refining your skills as much as you might like to, and you need to challenge yourself. You need to take your work to the next level if you want to grow as a blacksmith. Maybe this is as far as you want to go in blacksmithing and you like this. Nothing wrong with that at all. You need to practice the craft at your comfort level and the way you want to. I'm not going to tell you what you have to do in blacksmithing. But for me, I need to challenge myself. Now, over the past five years or so here at Black Bear Forge, we have made a lot of hooks. We've made a lot of fire pokers, a lot of very simple, basic projects, toasting forks. I don't know how many toasting forks we've made. And while those things are great beginner projects, they don't particularly challenge me in most cases. There have been some projects here that challenge me. In fact, the video on making the hand the other day, that was a whole lot of fun. I appreciated that challenge. I took a week off making videos just so I could work on that for a two week period. And I was really glad to have that extra time so that I could really work through that process and challenge myself and grow as a blacksmith. And I have come to the realization that my skills as a blacksmith are actually sliding backwards. I'm doing so much beginner and intermediate work that I'm not challenging myself. I'm not taking the next step in my evolution. I'm staying down here and slowly sinking as I do that. And I need to do things that are a little bit more advanced. And I hope you want to watch some of these projects. I hope you want to stick around and see me challenge myself. Even if you're not ready to take these things on, they are all built on basic skills, basic techniques. And as you become proficient at those basic skills and those basic techniques, you can do more advanced projects and you can challenge yourself. The project at hand today is going to be a window grill. This is actually based on slitting the round bar that we did for the sliding latch not too long ago. That was another nice challenging project. But I'm going to bring that technique into a bigger project, a little bit different version of it, and that'll all make sense as we go with this project. Now the work on a project like this starts with a full-size layout. And my other workbench that's actually really clean right now doesn't have any room for me to do a full-size layout, so I need to clear this bench off which has become the holding area for unfinished projects. It's amazing how many things I got half done. I've got five billets already forged out for making cable Damascus axes. I may never get back to those. It's hard to say. Hopefully I'll find the time though, because these were a lot of fun and they did challenge my creativity. I got some little pierce pieces that are gonna be a little ornamental item for something here in the shop. These have been on my to-do list for eh, 10 years now maybe. Maybe not quite that long, but it's been a while. Anyways, I gotta get this cleared off. Then I've got a piece of sheet metal that I will put up here. My full size drawing will go on the sheet metal. That way, if I need to move it to do something else on this bench, I can move the drawing off of here. But for now, it's just a matter of doing some cleanup. Unfortunately, this usually turns into an exercise and just moving things to a new location where it will be ignored until it's in the way there and then probably get put back here so it can be in the way here again. It's a vicious, endless cycle is what it is. You know, I think one of these days we're going to do an entire series of videos, maybe two years worth, it's nothing but let's empty this red cart and figure out what this stuff was supposed to be in the first place and get all those projects done. I think there's maybe two dozen Viking style axes that are started in some form or another but haven't been finished. There's a whole bunch of hinges on there, door handles, all sorts of stuff that just needs to be finished. And even though we've looked at a lot of this kind of stuff before, at some point I'm going to have to work on that and hopefully there'll be good videos.
Now I realize a video like this is not the most exciting thing in the world to watch, but it's an absolute reality if you want to do bigger projects, more challenging projects, because you've got to get your shop ready for it to start with, you've got to do the layout work, you've got to do the test pieces, and if you don't, you're probably not going to end up with your best work. I think before I install this grill, I probably ought to paint the window and replace this one broken pane of glass. It'd be a lot easier to do before I put the grill up. Now I'm just going to put some notes on here and a little sketch so I know what the actual dimensions of the window are. So this is the wooden sash the way it is. Not necessarily the size of the grill. A project like this will never be any more accurate than the accuracy of your layout. So the more important it is for this to fit a specific space, the more accurate you need to be with your layout. Do close calculations, double check your measurements, and use very precise methods of actually drawing the layout. If you're using a soapstone, you need to sharpen it constantly, or you go from having a nice thin crisp line to a thick line. Soapstone may not be the best. Silver pencil is better, and for this project, that's more than accurate enough. But if you need absolute precision, use a scribe line. There's nothing better than a nice crisp scribe line. Another important thing to consider is starting with a point on the drawing that is going to be where all your other measurements are taken from. So for this, because there's a vertical and a horizontal, I want one good corner and all of my measurements will either come from this side or from the bottom up. This is a pretty simple project. I could probably build it without a layout, but this is good practice and helps develop better habits. Now I'm going to base this entire project off of three quarter inch bar stock. I'm going to use three quarter inch round for the two vertical bars and a three quarter inch square bar set on the diamond for the one horizontal. For the frame, I'm going to use three quarter by one. But as I do the layout, I want to lay out for those three quarter inch widths. Just had a, ran out of lead my silver pencil. This little thing is a Mark All Silver Streak. It's just a lead holder with a silver lead. Most welding suppliers and industrial suppliers carry these. But if you need one and want to support me here at Black Bear Forge, I do have some of these on the Etsy shop. There is a considerable markup because I don't have a wholesale way of buying these, so I pay retail, pay shipping to get them to me, and then I still have to get them back out to you. But you do support Black Bear Forge a little bit if you want to buy them from the Etsy shop. Now as I do this, I'm actually allowing for larger spacing because I want my frame to the outside of the window. So I've been added an inch all the way around. So if you're reading the tape measure and wondering why it doesn't look like my original measurements, that's because I'm doing the math and making the adjustments as I do the full size layout. So with the full size layout done, I have a cut list of the materials I need, and it's time to go out to the stock rack, find the materials, make sure I have enough, and I'm going to go ahead and rough cut them. I'm cutting these just a little bit longer than they need to be to make sure that I've got the materials for the project set aside, and I won't accidentally use too much making test pieces. If necessary, I can use shorter pieces for test pieces and just do a little bit extra math to figure out what my lengths are between punched holes and things like that. And that means test pieces are the next step. But I'm not sure if I'll get those done today, so I'm going to save those for a separate video. And that is sort of the format I'm going with this. I want to break this up into sections that are both easily digestible for you to watch, but also for me to make so I'm not trying to do too much at one time. And hopefully that means this will be a nice, smooth, relaxed project. I really find that I do my best work when I'm relaxed, I'm not in a hurry, there's not a big deadline, and I can just do what I need to do each day and just not worry about all that other stuff so much. The takeaway here is sometimes I just got to do projects that I'm passionate about that challenge me, and I need to try and intermix those with the projects that 
are more interesting to the beginners, the novice smiths, and perhaps the simple one-day project. So there's going to be a variety of things here. We certainly aren't going to go to an all-architectural blacksmith. In fact, I don't really have a big interest in architectural blacksmithing. I just find things like these window grills to be a great place to learn and improve technique. The other thing I think you're going to see going forward is I'm going to allow myself more freedom to do the work the way I really do it. A lot of times I choose to do things at the anvil solely because I know a lot of you don't have a power hammer, a lot of you don't have a hydraulic press, but I'm kind of starting to feel like maybe that's a little bit deceptive because the truth is I use this stuff. I use it all the time and I would rather show you honestly how I work instead of give you the impression that I do all this stuff at the anvil when I don't. That doesn't mean you can't do it at the anvil. It's absolutely possible. And anytime you see somebody using a power hammer, a hydraulic press, screw press, plasma cutter, cutting torch, and you don't have that equipment, that's just a chance for you to use your creativity, a chance for you to challenge yourself, a chance for you to come up with another way to do something similar. You may not end up with exactly the same piece, but you can take the idea, use the tools, the techniques, the skills that you have available to you, and make it your own. I do hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, try to challenge yourself and be creative, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, We'll see you for the next video. And for those of you who are still watching the video at this point, I really appreciate it. There's probably no greater thing you can do to help support a YouTube channel than actually watching the videos start to finish. So thanks for sticking it out. Now I really am done.